It's Alex, the Bookubus. Welcome to my library. Hello, so I'm finally getting around to doing a library tour and I'm going to be splitting this over several videos I think and in this first video I will be just giving an overview of all of my books so we'll get to see yeah all of my shelves and other things that hold books <laughs> and then in subsequent videos I'll go further into detail in different sections of my collection so you will get to see the covers of all of my horror paperbacks and more and I also just wanted to talk a little bit about my book collection, library, whatever you want to call it. Um, apparently a library has to have a minimum of a thousand books which I have accomplished so this is officially a library. Um, I think I haven't counted every single book but at a rough estimate it's probably about 1400 maybe getting on 1500. So before I get rambling about my books let's take a look at <laughs> the actual books themselves and I guess side note is I organise my books alphabetically by author surname and then within that by title unless it's a series in which case they go in series order. So I think that's pretty much <laughs> my organisation tactic and generally they're organised by whatever author name is on the book itself so I don't put you know books that are published under a pen name I don't put them with the author's real name I just go by whatever is on the cover but yeah chances are I know that it's a pseudonym I just like that better most of these are my books and some of them are my husband's and yeah we've generally tried to keep things in like separate genres or topics but yeah some things you know can fit into multiple different sections and so it's just like you've just got to make a decision at some point and stick it somewhere so yeah anyway let's take a look at my library okay so here is the first part of the library. It is in our living room so we've got the TV in here and on either side of the old chimney breast my husband very kindly made me these built-in bookshelves which are awesome and I very quickly filled them up. <laughs> so these are mostly vintage horror mass market paperbacks uh, that takes up the bulk of this and then there are a couple of shelves of vintage YA horror paperbacks and then the bottom two shelves, uh, one on each side, is mostly horror again and they are hardbacks. So let's take a bit of a closer look. So this is one side of the shelving, I can't actually fit it all in frame but yeah here is the top so we have one two three four five six shelves of paperbacks and then one shelf of hardbacks and then I have um, the dog ornament over here and cat over on this side and then this little guy is Count Rockula which was a really awesome gift from one over at Plague by Visions and then here we have the other side so carrying on with the horror paperbacks for a few more shelves and then let's see about if I can get my finger in frame about here it segues into young adult horror and that continues for the next couple of shelves and then the bottom shelf again is hardbacks and yeah we've got the other cat and other dog on either side from the the ones on the other side so they're, they're both matching pairs 
And moving over slightly on the wall here is a paper cut that I made inspired by one of my favourite books, The Cipher by Kathy Koja. Okay, and then flipping around again, it's quite hard <laughs> with the dimensions of the room to actually get the whole thing in, but this is basically the facing wall to what we were just looking at. And uh, yeah, let's take a closer look. So basically the first two rows of shelves here are fiction and it's a mixture of horror but not mass market paperback size or it's non-horror stuff of various size books. So let's see if this will let me pan across. So yeah, hard to tell from here but yeah that's the top two rows. And here is starting at the other end and I'll see if I can pan back to see if there were any that we missed but yeah basically that's the top two shelves are fiction and then uh, this last little section here um, just this little bit is uh, anthologies um, I think they're mostly horror, but I don't think they fit over on the shelves on the other side, so they had to go over here. So moving down to the next two rows, um, I think this is mostly my husband's books. Uh, he enjoys non-fiction quite a lot, um, stuff to do with the world and with history, so yeah, I... I'm familiar with a couple of titles in here, but the rest of it, <laughs> I don't really know what it is. So I will just share this section for you. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know and I will ask. <laughs> so in this section, um, these two shelves here, like this kind of area is Mostly non-fiction, although there are some fiction titles in there as well, but it is, I guess, mostly like weird stuff <laughs> or like, I guess, darker subject matter. So we've got like vampires and witches and ghosts and yeah, Grimm's fairy tales and folk stories, stuff like that. And then over on the right, so this little section here is... Uh, middle grade horror so we've got some goosebumps and then various other things and um, this section here this shelf is mostly true crime um, and a couple of other things that just didn't really fit anywhere else but I think yeah I think that's mostly non-fiction stuff and then moving down to the bottom shelf um, on the left here, this kind of section is all what mostly like human anatomy related. Um, I did study that for a little bit some years ago and yeah, it's a topic I find really interesting. And then there is actually a really giant human anatomy book on the floor there because it doesn't fit anywhere else. And then this here is a little step stool because I literally can't reach the top couple of shelves without it so yeah back up here um and then this section here is mostly uh, crochet related because i enjoy crocheting and then there's a couple of other like home decorating books and sewing books and then moving on to this section that's more um yeah it's kind of like how to do various different things <laughs> so we've got like screen printing and beekeeping and lock picking as you do and then a couple of books on writing and then in the next little section here is i think that's mostly like funny books and um, plus a few other things that didn't really fit anywhere else so we've got fist of fun which is yeah one of my favorite comedy shows from back in the 90s with Stuart Lee and Richard Herring and then yeah we've got stuff like The League of Gentlemen which is also amazing 
And then moving along, this little section is, I guess, mostly like travel stuff and things about various countries. Um, yeah, Tower of London, Castles of Britain, we've got Scotland, Ireland, uh, the history of torture and execution. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, your usual stuff. Sorry, this is a bit dark, but let's just go with it. Um, so this kind of follows on from the shelf above it, which has some of the like Grimm's fairy tales and folk stories and stuff. Um, so we have some more, yeah, like myths and legends and folklore. Um, we've got this amazing, uh, it's a Reader's Digest book. It's called Folklore, Myths and Legends of Britain. And it's amazing. Um, and as you can see, there's a bunch of tabs in here uh, that my husband put in because he read it some years ago. And yeah, there's a bunch of really interesting things in there. And then that moves on to, yeah, just some other like weird stuff, I guess, like mysteries of the unexplained, mysteries of the unknown. <laughs> so yeah, just some more interesting topics there. And then this last section, which I'm kind of struggling to get all in frame, but uh, we have, again, a mixture of things. Um, on the left, we've got um, a couple of Dita Von T's books. We've got some photography books and other various like art and design. We have this ginormous circus book, which is really, really cool. And then onto some yeah more photography and art stuff and then finishing with another ginormous book all about magic. And in another room I have my Point Horror book display. It's still here and I still love it. It's amazing. And I also have this stack of children's books, uh, most of which are from my childhood <laughs> that I've kept all these years and then a few others are more recent editions and I don't actually have shelf space for these right now so they're just randomly sitting in a pile on top of a chest of drawers but um, yeah here's just a quick scan of those yes my little pony fact file on the top that's right and then just to be a completionist, I also wanted to share these books, which are some of my husband's film related books. They're currently in a room that's, yeah, a work in progress. So ignore <laughs> the background. Okay, let's now go through them a little bit closer and I'm having to do this handheld and currently I am standing precariously on top of a step stool. So let's just sit back and go through some of these spines.
So those were all of my books. It is, you know, a work in progress. I'm always buying more books because I can't help myself. And yeah, I, I've always enjoyed reading ever since I was young. I've always enjoyed owning books and having a collection of books, whether small or large. And yeah, I just enjoy having books that I have already read and I can look at them and be like, oh yeah, that book was great, wasn't it? And also having books that I have not yet read, so I have them to look forward to and I can look at them and be like, oh yeah, that book looks great, I can't wait to read it. <laughs> Clearly I acquire books way faster than I can actually read them, but generally I do buy books to read, so that's why a lot of these are maybe not in the best condition, but that really doesn't bother me. Um, I've always been okay with secondhand books ever since I was younger, like that's not something that bothers me. I don't have to have new copies of things at all. And especially with collecting vintage horror, you know, lots of these books are out of print, so you're only going to get them if it's in an original edition and for a lot of cases there just aren't many of them <laughs> floating around. So when I'm buying the books, as long as it's readable, that's pretty much my only criteria. Of course it's still nice to be able to get books that are in great condition, even if they're old, but I'm not picky is basically what I'm trying to say. I'm just happy to have these books, really, and you know, for the most part I don't spend a lot on them, so that's definitely a factor in <laughs> not being able to be picky. Of course, if I had the money I could go online and track down, you know, excellent condition copies of things and first editions of everything, but I don't have that kind of money, so I just, yeah, I have to take what I can get and be happy <laughs> with it. And I am, of course. And another reason that I don't mind buying not great condition books is that I just feel like, especially when you see them in a thrift store or a library book sale, you know, they only have so much of a shelf life and if no one actually buys them they probably end up in landfill eventually. So I feel like me buying them is saving them from that fate and also, yeah, stopping more stuff going into landfill and such like. So, um, you know, it's another good excuse anyway to buy more books, right? So another little tidbit I thought I would share is when I was preparing for this video I got curious as to how many of my vintage horror paperbacks I have actually found in the wild versus ones I have either tracked down online or have been given to me as gifts and it's actually over 60% of my mass market paperbacks behind me that I've found out in the wild. So that's thrift stores, library book sales, and occasionally secondhand bookshops. Um, so that's pretty cool. I guess I should clarify though, it's not like every time I go to a thrift store or a library book sale I come out, you know, with an armful of hidden gems and, you know, obscure paperbacks from hell. That is definitely not the case. <laughs> I wish it was. There are plenty of times that I go out looking for books and I come home empty-handed and disappointed. But there are also times when I have found a bunch of really great gems in one trip. So yeah, those are the times that keep me looking. Um, I think, yeah, my only real advice is just to get out there and look. You know, you're not going to find anything <laughs> if you don't get out there and look, but you do have to be prepared for not finding anything at all. That's just the way it goes. So for those of you that don't know, I am originally from the UK. I lived there my entire life until 2015 when I moved to the US, so that's where I currently live. And when I moved, I had to get rid of a bunch of my physical possessions. And it was uh, quite the brutal process. I had to get rid of a lot of things, 
and some of them I dearly regret getting rid of now but that's hindsight for you. Of course there are a bunch of things I kept and I'm like why on earth <laughs> did I keep that and ship it like halfway around the world? No idea. Anyway among the things I had to get rid of were a lot of books and yeah I had to make some tough decisions. Um, I did keep some books. I ended up keeping what I thought were you know books that might be less easy to track down again if I wanted to or would be more expensive to buy again. So I did end up getting rid of a lot of my fiction books, paperbacks, um, etc. And yeah, I wish I could have kept hold of everything, I really do. But yeah, it had to be done. And anyway, once I moved to the US, I ended up stumbling upon books in thrift stores and then I also found out about library book sales which are amazing and through those avenues I have been able to buy a ton more books over the past few years. So my book collection has definitely grown quite significantly and I'm thankful to be currently in a place where I actually have room <laughs> for quite a lot of books. You know I haven't had that luxury uh, previously. So that's definitely a factor in me buying more and more but I am reaching the point where there's really hardly any shelf space left so not quite sure what's gonna happen next but yeah either we need more shelves but I don't know if we have walls for them or I have to stop buying books so we will see. So that was the introduction and overview of my library. Do let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, feel free to leave a question or a comment below. I am hoping to do one of these like once a month, I think should be doable. And don't you worry, the next one, we're gonna be diving into the vintage horror paper bags. So that's, that in itself is going to take a few videos to get through, I think. So thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!